The end of the fall semester is just weeks away, and that means many students are starting to stress out over final projects and exams. Coming up, MCTV's Mallory Roberts has the details on one event that gave students a chance to find some calm in the craziness. The Texas Tech Residence Hall Association puts a premium on making sure students in the dorms feel part of a community during their time here on campus. MCTV's Brinkley Rash has a look at one recent event that helped bring students together next. And the Texas Tech football team returned home to the Jones in hopes of getting one win closer to bowl eligibility. But could the Red Raiders outlast the TCU Horn Frogs? MCTV's Ryan Heller has a look at the game and more in sports. This is the MCTV Weekday Update. Welcome to the Monday edition of the NCTV Weekday Update. I'm Austin Seat. And I'm Bryant Torres. The countdown to finals is underway here on the Texas Tech campus, and as of today, there are only 10 class days remaining in the fall semester. That's true, Bryant. And with Thanksgiving break falling right in the middle of those 10 days, many students are feeling the pressure of classwork, final projects, and exams. MCTV Mallory's Roberts stopped by the sub last week to see how one campus group gave students a free option to take a moment and escape the end of the semester madness. I'm here in the sub today with Sab making a new mask as part of their mask and relax event. Sab's Spirit and Traditions Coordinator Bethany DeLuna says that Sab puts on these events to help students unwind. We're at Mask and Relax, but we just wanted the students to have a chance to relax. We had free massages, so they can make their own chocolate face mask. And it's just really cool to see them come out and uh, relax with us. Everyone can relate to feeling stressed during this time of the semester, including SAB member Taylor Moore. I feel like it's good because a lot of people get like caught up in the stress of day-to-day -day school activities, school, like homework, and I get that way too. And so I feel like just having a break in the middle to just like relax your shoulders, just take a deep breath, and I think that's really important for everyone. Many students came out to enjoy the event and were able to customize their masks, like sophomore Blaine Tanley. So I made a charcoal face mask using like coconut oil, charcoal powder, and some essential oils. I use like a menthol mint base to you know, clear sinuses. The charcoal masks may have looked like a sticky mess, but that didn't deter students. Uh, mixing it, definitely mixing it, because it's just cool to see the transition in it and uh, to see that. You know, it goes from three different compounds all to just one big black base, so that I really like those. There were different ingredients available, so students had the chance to make their masks their own. There's so many essential oils, and you can mix them all up, and it just smells really good. There was also a masseuse at the event giving out free massages, which drew over grad student Hannah Snidman. <laughs> um, I love massages, so when I saw that they were uh, letting us do or giving out free massages today, I took a break and came and got a um, free massage. It was wonderful. The event was complete with relaxing music and drew quite a few students to the courtyard. I think they just enjoy like being like surprised when they see stuff like this going on and getting to know more about like the little events that we throw and being aware of it. Even students who were unaware of the event at first were able to relax and have a good time. I hope they continue doing events like these because it was awesome. <laughs> For more information about SAB's events, visit ttu.edu slash SAB. For MCTV, I'm Mallory With the spring semester just around the corner, many students are already focused on figuring out how to pay for the next half of the school year. Luckily, one department hosted an event that gave students a sweet way to become financially savvy. On Friday, the Student Financial Aid Office hosted the Nothing Bunt Scholarships event in West Hall. Starting at 11 a.m., students can stop by the scholarship office on the second floor and learn more about scholarship opportunities here on campus. Representatives from Student Financial Aid were also on hand to help students with the university's online scholarship application. On top of that, attendees also had the chance to enjoy free bunt cake during last week's event. The Nothing Bunt Scholarships event wrapped up at 2 p.m. on Friday, but there's still lots of information online to help students navigate the scholarship application process. For more information on how to apply a list of available scholarships, visit scholarships.ttu.edu. There are more than 30,000 students here at Texas Tech, 
and every one of them has a story, but not all, all of them are easy to share. Once a semester, Texas Tech has an outlet for those wanting to express themselves in a creative way. The biannual healing in the arts performance was held last Thursday evening in the International Cultural Center's auditorium. During the performance, students shared stories of trauma through dancing, acting, singing, and art. The topics presented during Thursday's event included sexual assault and abuse, bullying, self-harm, suicide attempts, loss of loved ones, and more. The performance started at 6.30 p.m. and it was followed by a panel of committee members who discussed the show and took questions from the audience. Healing in the Arts is a student organization that uses opportunities like last week's performance to bring change and healing to the Lubbock community. Thursday's event was co-sponsored by the Tech Council on Family Relations. Texas Tech's Residence Hall Association hosts several events over the course of each semester to help build community between the students who live in the dorms. MCTV's Brinkley Rash stopped by one event last week to see how RHA is making sure that everyone living on campus feels included. The Lit Night Show took place on November 13th from 7 o'clock p.m. to 8.30 p.m. It was held in the Walgate Residence Hall lobby and allowed students to pick out sweet treats and learn a little more about their school. Lit is the leadership inclusion team and basically it is just promoting and advocating for students that have differences and also social justice within Texas Tech University. Students in and outside the Gates Residence Hall got to meet others alike and different from themselves by asking survey questions and recording them with the swipe of a card. Perfect. My favorite part about being in Lit and you know hosting this event is that we get to include a lot of people and you know, our group is about inclusion and we want everyone to feel included and feel like they're in a safe environment and I also really like advocating for social issues that are important for people. Um, I decided to be the advisor of Lit because it's a really great opportunity for us to look at um, what is happening within our residence halls, um, look at the different individuals that we have, um, figure out programs that we can adapt and make everybody feel comfortable and at home and make sure that everybody feels included, whether they're living in our halls or just on our campus as a whole. The night ended with sold out sweets and bunt cakes and newfound friendships. The Lit Night Show was an evening filled with new experiences and the opportunity for tech students to learn more about their school. From NCTV, I'm Brinkley Rash. Back to you. Over the weekend, the South Plains experienced some mild conditions as highs climbed into the 60s and low temperatures stayed above freezing for Saturday and sa Sunday night. That's right, Austin. So, can we expect more mild weather as we head into this week? MCTV's Madison Harton joins us in the studio with the latest look at the forecast. Madison? Thanks, guys. Well, it has been a very uncategoristically warm November here on the South Plains, and today is going to be pretty par for the course when compared to the last couple of days we've been experiencing here. Right now, looking at our MCTV tower cam, we can see that there is not a cloud in sight at the moment. The skies are big and blue and beautiful. As you all know, that's the way I always like to see them, but I am. Honest God, I am missing a little bit of that cloud cover. I haven't seen any good cloud formations in the past couple days. For today, our high temperature climbed all the way up to 71 degrees with sunny and mild conditions and a wind coming from the north by northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Now, that wind is actually really interesting. As we all know, it can get pretty windy here on the South Plains, and but the wind is going to come to basically a standstill tonight with wind only coming at 0 to 5 miles per hour. If you know Texas Tech, that doesn't happen here. The air is always moving, so the fact that it's going to be still is going to make it seem a little bit odd around here. Last time the wind was still around here. It felt a little unnatural to go outside. It didn't quite feel like Lubbock. But for the most part, it's going to be mostly in clear with cool conditions as the low drops down to 40 degrees for tonight. And we are going to be seeing similar conditions as we move into our lows for tomorrow. Lubbock metropolitan area will be experiencing a low of 40 degrees tomorrow morning with our coolest temperatures for the South Plains being out northwest, northeast of us. Northwest of us, I'm sorry. Northwest of us, Fredona at 37 degrees Fahrenheit, but we won't be seeing any freezing temperatures for the South Plains. Looking at our warmer temperatures for the South Plains, however, we can see that to the east of us, we are going to be experiencing warm temperatures out at Childress and Aspermount with 74 degrees. So again, very warm for November. This is not what we usually expect to see for our no November temperatures, especially considering that we had one of the coldest Octobers on record here for Lubbock, Texas. But who knows, the, winter, the rest of the winter could be seeing us return to another round of cooler temperatures. I'm thankful for this warm weather that we're experiencing right now. 
Going into Tuesday, we can see that we're going to be experiencing a high of 74 degrees with, again, that abundant sunshine continuing with a low of 53 degrees and a south by southwesterly wind at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Now for Wednesday, that is when things are going to get a little bit crazy for us again. High of 68, low of 44, and a south by southwesterly wind coming at 15 to 25 miles per hour, but we could be seeing wind gusts up to 35 miles per hour. With our with that, we're going to be experiencing a lot of rain showers as we move into Wednesday afternoon. 60% chance of precipitation for the Le Lubbock metropolitan area with a lot of thunderstorms. And as we all know, when it rains in Lubbock, it floods. So if you see water in the roads, I recommend you stay off of them. It's just safer to wait until the water can drain off for a little bit before you try to go drive in those huge puddles. For Thursday, we will be seeing another return to form with a high of 62, low of 36, that abundant sunshine continuing, and an east by southeasterly wind coming at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Now, we could be seeing another chance of precipitation as we roll into Friday and Saturday for this weekend. So I suggest that you check out our Thursday weather newscast. That way you can plan your weekend accordingly. I'm Madison Arden for MCTV Weather. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Madison. For only the fourth time in history, a U.S. president is facing the possibility of impeachment. And another international leader is causing controversy after attempting to overstay his welcome. MCTV's Uvier Bacomo joins us with a look at those stories and more in our weekly news roundup. Uvier? Thanks, Austin and Bryant. The House impeachment inquiry was all over Capitol Hill last week. Wednesday marked the start of a nationally televised impeachment hearings into President Donald Trump. Last week's hearings brought into question issues of presidential authority, constitutional power, and foreign policy. William Taylor, the top American diplomat in Ukraine, was one of the first witnesses at the hearing. He said he was told President Trump cared more about investigating former Vice President Joe Biden than he did about Ukraine. Taylor's testimony further implicated the president in a campaign to pressure Ukraine to publicly commit to investigating the former Vice President. Taylor said he learned only recently of a July telephone call overheard by one of his aides in which the president was preoccupied with Ukraine's willingness to say it would look into Mr. Biden and his son Hunter Biden's work at a Ukraine energy firm. Other testimonies include those from f former National Security Council staffer Fiona Hill, former U.S. Ambassador to Ukraine Maria Yovanovitch, and State Department official George Kent. The United States is, the, is not the only country facing a presidential scandal. In international news, the presidency of Bolivia saw a big change after a major scandal in civil unrest. Former Bolivian President Evo Morales, who came to power more than a decade ago, resigned last week after unrelenting protests accusing him of undermining the country's democracy in an attempt to extend his rule. Morales maintains that his resignation was forced as a coup. Senator Janine Anya Chavez declared herself the interim president after Morales resigned. Morales served longer than any other current head of state in Latin America and is currently seeking political asylum in Mexico. And a far-right party emerged as the winner after parliamentary elections in Spain. Vox, an ultra-nationalist and anti-migration party, is now Spain's third largest party after doubling its seats in last week's elections. It was the country's fourth round of voting in four years. Two days later, Pedro Sanchez, Spain's caretaker socialist prime minister, agreed to partner with Unidas Podemos a form, to form a government, a hard-left party that he had previously rejected. Vox leader Santiago Abascal denounced the deal. Back on the home front, former Governor DeVal Patrick of Massachusetts announced a 2020 presidential campaign, adding a late twist to an already turbulent Democratic primaries. Last week, former Governor Patrick joined the Democratic race less than three, more, three months before the Iowa caucuses. But, but Patrick is not the only late addition to the race. Former Mayor of New York City Michael Bloomberg filed papers last week to qualify for the Alabama primary. He also filed to be on the ballot for Arkansas. Reports say Bloomberg has seriously explored running for president at least three times. That's all for your weekly, for your weekly news roundup. Back to you, Austin and Bryant. Thanks, UVA. The Texas Tech football team welcomed the TCU Horned Frogs to town this weekend as they continued looking for two more wins and bowl eligibility. But could the Red Raiders secure another victory in the Jones? MCTV's Ryan Heller joins us with a look back at Saturday's game in sports. Ryan? Thanks, Bryant and Austin. Yes, Texas Tech football lost a soul crusher to TCU 33-31. With two minutes and 30 seconds left in the game, the Red Raiders had a chance to go for a game-winning drive. However, that chance lost hope after McLean Mannix fumbled at their own 20-yard line, allowing TCU to chew the clock and win the game. 
At four and six, there is still hope for a bowl for a bowl game appearance, as Tech will take on Kansas State here at the Jones. The game will start at 6 p.m. No more 11 a.m. games, thank God. And if you can't make it to the Jones, it will be televised on FS1. Texas Tech soccer pulled off a thriller against the Pepperdine Waves in the first round of the NCAA playoffs. After getting off to a 2-0 start, the Waves scored late in the first half and, a, and, and again early in the second half due to a questionable foul call that led to a successful penalty kick, and it would stay tied the rest of regulation time. That led to two scoreless overtime periods and penalty kicks where Tech came out on top 4-3. Next round, they will face the Michigan Wolverines on Friday in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Texas Tech women's basketball defeated Sam Houston State on Thursday, 99-57. Jonay Johnson had 23 points with 6 assists. Brittany Brewer scored 17 points and had 14 rebounds along with 8 blocks. Newcomer Alexis Tucker had 23 points off the bench along with 13 rebounds. Their next game will be against Florida A&M tonight here at the USA. The game will tip off at 6 p.m. Texas Tech Volleyball finally broke their six-game losing streak with a win against West Virginia, three sets to two. Emily Hill recorded 22 kills. Brooke Canis had 15 kills and five blocks. And Alex Kirby was amazing with 55 assists. This was also their first win in Morgantown since 2015. Up next, the Red Raiders will take on the Iowa State Cyclones here at the USA on Wednesday. The match will start at 6 p.m. And now for news outside of Tech. The LA Rams defeated the Chicago Bears last night 17-7. The Rams had a 10-7 lead going into the fourth quarter until Malcolm Brown ran for a touchdown to pretty much seal the game with three minutes left. The Bears made a valiant effort with a minute and 55 left, but was unable to complete a fourth down conversion, giving victory to the Rams. Tonight's matchup will be between the Kansas City Chiefs and the LA Chargers tonight in Mexico City at 7.15 on ESPN. Well, that's all for sports. Back to you, Brian and Austin. Thanks, Ryan. So, Austin, did you get a chance to catch the Texas Tech football or soccer game this weekend? Uh, I was able to catch the, uh, the Tech football game. It was very close up until that end, but I do believe that we can still get bowl eligibility. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all for today's edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. Thanks so much for joining us, and be sure to check ttuhub.net every day for more news. We'll see you on Thursday.